Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about two bags that I purchased. One was a fail, one was a success, and we're gonna talk about why. If you're interested to learn more, stick around. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My channel is about treating yourself to a little bit of luxury, whether that be your cup of coffee, favorite fragrances, SLG, skincare, or a designer handbag or two. And this video is sort of a fail, sort of a win, sort of a lessons learned. So if you're interested in learning about do's and don'ts of shopping pre-loved and the pitfalls you may fall under. I'm not an expert by any means, but I learned a couple things on this journey and I'm happy to share it with you. So uh, let's get into it. I decided this year that I'm gonna spend the majority of my time um, focusing on getting some bags that got away back in the 2000s through basically the first 20 years of, of this century. Oh, that's just <laughs> kind of traumatizing to say. But really, honestly, there are a lot of bags that were really great that came out, you know, between uh, 2000 and 2015 kind of um, era. And a lot of them I missed out on. This particular designer, I kind of knew of, but I knew of them in association with another brand and not their own brand. So when I heard some other YouTubers like Jack's Bag Attack um, mention them and Birkin Boy um, is very fond of this brand as well. I Pickles is down there <laughs> chewing up things. I just got really intrigued by um, looking at their, their brand. So um, this particular brand is Reed Krakoff. Um, they were the creative direct director for Coach from, I believe it was 96, might be wrong on the exact date, 96 through to like 2013. Um, so a very long time at Coach and a lot of um, kind of classic pieces that came out around that time. Um, interestingly enough, side note, there is this time where the burrow bag came out which was around i believe 2013 kind of era um that is one of my favorite bags from coach and i can't figure out who if he had inspired it had had any input on the design of it but it's one of my favorite bags but it happened to come out around the time he was leaving coach and then another designer took over um from another um, variety of different brands that are out there. So that kind of um, transition period, I'm very fond of the coach bags from that era. And then when I looked up Reed's particular styles, I could kind of see some crossover there from, you know, the way the handles were done, some of the stitching, the pocket, side pockets, just some of the structure, general design structure of his bags were very similar to some of the coach bags that I found very um, interesting back then. So um, the first bag that I came across um, through Jackie was the boxer bag and apparently um, Craig had I guess made her aware of it or <laughs> somehow it came to be where that's how she found it and she started picking up a bunch of them on the pre-love market Poshmark you know where have you um, and they were quite reasonable um, to be had and the the reason why is there are actually two Reed Krekoff um, type of brands one is his actual you know personal brand um, very high quality very um, high-end expensive bags and then there is what some might consider his downfall <laughs> was partnering with Kohl's and Kohl's took a lot of those designs from his high-end brand and made them for their store with let's just be blunt cheaper materials and just use the design but then streamlined you know they're they're vegan they're polyurethane um the stitching is different the um there's little nuances to every bag that's just a little bit different and it's just the quality isn't there but they were very reasonable so if you wanted the look you could have the look it just wasn't going to be a very um 
you know, high quality bag in the end. So when you come across them on the pre-loved market, you will see a lot of them, um, people maybe just don't know, or maybe they're being <laughs> deceptive, I don't know. But you'll notice that the real brand will pop up as a reed bag and the I don't want to call them faux. It's like, what's the, <laughs> the diffusion line as a lot of people call it. The Kohl's brand one will come up as Reed Creek often that it just constantly gets confused. So long story short, I heard, I watched the live, I heard, you know, the name, I wasn't paying attention, which is what I do it all the time. I wasn't paying attention. I just saw the design and was like, oh, that's really cute. I think that's really pretty. Let me look, let me find one. And I came across one on Poshmark and I was just like, that's the bag for me. It was like $25. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll take a chance. You know, who knows? And it arrived <laughs> all squished. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's in fine condition. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it per se, but I was like, the minute I touched it, I was like, Oh, Oh, it's plastic. <laughs> like, this, this is not, this can't be the brand. And of course, now I know that there are distinguishing features that, um, tell it apart from the real thing. So bought this one, was disappointed that um, it wasn't the right one, but it was still pretty nonetheless. So I just kind of keep it off to the side there. But I spent the last couple of weeks um, looking for a real one and just this time paid attention to um, the little nuances that would get us to a real bag so you know this is the boxer bag so the belted um feature in there so when you quick autumn you know quickly look at us a, a listing you're gonna see the little um handle holder a luggage tag um you'll see the the belt looks like there it has the pocket it's supposed to have and um you go in and it's just a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be, but I mean, it, it looked fine until, and I'll start inserting pictures as to what the differences are. But then I looked and it was like, oh, it just says read. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. And as I've discovered, if it just says read on the luggage tag or inside in here, Pickles is down there. Pickles, come here. If it just has read, that is the telltale that it is a um, Kohl's one. So there's other things as well, but that's the that's the first thing that you'll notice is that the read read by itself brand, and I might even say read American Luxury, that itself is the Kohl's one, but the actual read brand has this logo and you can barely see it on here but you'll see that logo on the dust bag if you happen to be lucky enough to get one with the dust bag this was a little rare and then um I got this at a, an incredibly good deal it is rather used up um the belt is bent um it has read quick off back here stamped and apparently according to Craig that's your most obvious thing is somewhere on an authentic bag you'll have this actual stamping boxers that are on the back um I think the Atlantics were on the side he said um I'll link his video because it was like life-changing for me after I watched it but um when you go in in here, and I'll insert closets of it, there's actually two tags. One is that logo that I just showed, and one is just a Vaqueta, um tag that has his name on it. So that's kind of where you know, Pickles, please stop. That's when you know that you have an authentic um, Reed branded one. So this one is missing the um, handle 
holder. It's missing the hang tag. So it's obviously not in perfect condition, but I didn't really care. I was just like, you know what? This, this is kind of the colorway that I was looking for a nice neutral. Um, it was going to work for me. So a couple of the other features to make it more obvious now that I know of is um, the holes for the belts are a very long open um, like almost oval type of notch and the belt is loose whereas on this one they are rounded and the belt is sewn on so it's not movable at all but the pocket opens the same when you go inside, there are actually two, two zip pockets and not just a slip pocket. Um, slip pocket back here, it's magnetic. Not so on the Kohl's brand one. Um, what else was it? Oh, the closure. There is this flappy thing on the reed one that's kind of strange on there and then on the real one it's just an open compartment so you know just little things here and there there's also a crossbody strap on that one there is not one that came with this one i don't see where one could be attached i mean possibly through these little little holes right there but i don't see how that would have come with it. The handles are very sturdy on this one as opposed to that one being very um, malleable and um, I guess flimsy would be the word. The leather is very thick. It, you can tell that it's leather, um, very structured where that one's very um, mushy and you know it's just plastic. So handles are a little bit bigger. It's just um, pretty obvious of which I think I also noticed that um, this right here, because of the angle of it not being sewn down, um, you don't see that on the reed ones. The reed ones, they're going straight across right here and they're sewn down where this one on almost all of them, you're going to start to see these kind of curl these as well um you can tell that they're adjustable or, or movable in a sense or have some have some movement to them so i'm really excited to a couple of the other um read styles read bags and try them out um more i like the structured one but i i like the um atlantique that he had shown um it's more of a tote bag I, I just kind of like that style as well for work. So I want to get a couple of those just to have. Um, and again, they can be pretty reasonable for the, even the authentic ones. So, if, I mean, the first red flag for me was the, the price point. It's like usually the Kohl's ones are like sub $100 and these ones can be sub $100, but usually more in the $100 and up. I would... <laughs> This is just my opinion. I would not spend more than a couple hundred dollars on one of these just because of the age. And unless you can guarantee that it's like never been used and, you know, tag still attached or what have you, it's definitely worth more. They were sold for like a, a thousand up. Um, so I'm not saying they're not worth it as the, the brand um, as is, but be very careful <laughs> with how much you spend because again you want to make sure the quality is there this one I think I spent $50 on including shipping there's a lot of um, work that needs to be done it's all scratched up in here um, the leather is quite um, you know used it is a it was a used pre-love bag and that's okay um, other than that there's no real corner wear on it that I could tell that I cared about. The feet have an issue, but again, it's the feet. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna care. So um, I'm excited to have it as part of a new to me brand and just kind of checking out 
you know, how it works out for me. So I might even pick up another color because I just really kind of liked the, the way that they have so many, um, tricolor versions of it, different materials. There's like suede ones. Um, there was this really pretty, um, tweed one that I saw. So it's just, there's lots of variety on that. So looking out for which one is real versus faux, so to speak, is definitely, it takes a little bit of research. So make sure that you do look at that. Nothing wrong with picking up, you know, the Kohl's version, but just make sure that you're aware that that is what you're getting and you're paying an appropriate amount for that. So if you have any questions, hit me up down below. I'm going to link everybody else's channels because they're a lot more uh, wise when it comes to these particular bags. And we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.